In this video, we will continue making a connection between our XML file and the .java file in our activity. So what, have, what we have seen so far is when we click on a button, we are going to one of the attributes, which is the onClick, and this attribute will tell me which method in the main activity .java file I'll be executing when we click on that um, button. So we have method one, this will be called when we click on button one. When we click on button two, we are going to method two, which is also in here. Now what we will see is actually how to change some properties or some attributes for one of these objects in our um, layout file using our Java um, file. So let's start by adding a text view. I'm going to add a text view here and I'm gonna put some constraints on it. I'll place it on top of button one and then I'm gonna make a constraint to the left and constraint to the right of the um, parent or root layout so that will center it horizontally. Now as we said before one of the most important attributes in any um, view we have here is the ID. This ID is the one that we'll be using to make the connection or to uniquely identify this view object um, in our Java application. So let's give this um, text view, let's give it the ID text view. Let's call it text view main. So this is text view main and this is the ID we'll be using to uniquely identify this view in our Java file. Now if we go on back in our Java file, let's go to method one. So we want to change what happens or what text this um, text view displays when we click on button one. Now for each view we have in our XML file, we will have actually a similar um, object or class that represents that view in Java. So the text view in our XML file will have another class in our Java that represents that text view. So to be able to create an object of that text view, we can use the class name text view. And to be able to use it, you will be needing to um, import the android.widget package. So if you did not do that, you can click alt enter and that will import the android.widget.text view. Let's call that text view TV. And now we need to make the connection. So this text view that we have in Java, we want to connect it with the text view that we have in our XML. To do that, we'll be using one of the methods called find view by ID. And this find view by ID will take the um, ID that we have for that view. To be able to get the view, this view is, or the ID of the view is stored in a file called R, then dot ID, then dot the ID that you gave for that text view, which was text view dot or text view main. So to access the, or to find the view by its ID, the ID is stored in a file called R and in the section ID, and then the ID that we gave for that text view. So that will make the connection between the XML view that we have in our XML file with the Java object that is the text view object. Now, once we have the text view object TV, if we use the dot notation, we'll be able to access all the methods available for that text view. One of these methods is called set text, and we can pass a string in there that will set the text value we have or set the text property or attribute that we have in our XML file. So if you wanted to say button one clicked, when we click on button one, that what, that's what will be displayed in that um, text view. So again, we are making the connection we clicked on button one, button one will take me to method one in our my Java file. In method one, I'm displaying a log message with the tag main activity and the message button one clicked. And then I'm trying to find or make a connection between this Java file and my text view. So I'm trying to find the view in my XML file, which is, uh, which has the ID text view main. And I created a Java object called TV this Java object has a direct connection with the XML object. Now in my XML or in my Java object TV, I call the method called set text, and this set text method will go to the attribute text in my view in the XML and set the value for the text to button one clicked. So let's go ahead and run that application. Now it's installed. So we have, we still have the two buttons and we added a text view. Now when we click on button one, notice that the text view text changed to button one 
on clicked. Now button two does not do anything in our layout. We did not change anything that button two does because we did not add any code here to method um, two. So let's go ahead and change what we display for um, button two. Now notice since we created the text view object in here, in this method, so it's surrounded by these two curly braces, it only has um, local scope. So we will not be able to access the um, object TV in here directly because we do not have um, access to that in the local scope. So we can actually either create that object or the reference outside in my class or we can recreate the value directly. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to create the reference directly in the class. So text view TV and then I do not need this in here and I can go and access TV directly and set the text. So when we click on method 2 I will say that text button 2 was clicked. Let's go ahead and rerun our program. So when we click button 1, button 1 clicked. When we click button 2, it's saying button 2 clicked. If I click button 1 again, we keep switching between what's being displayed on the text view. Now the text value is not the only property we can change in our text view. So for example, if you went to TV dot, um, set text size, for example, set text size will allow you to change the size of that or of the font of that text. So this will accept a floating point um, size. Let's give it, for example, 37 if we clicked on button one. And let's um, change the font size or the text size for when we click on button um, two. Let's make it equal to 15. So if we clicked on button one, the text size will be 37. If we clicked on, on button two, the text size will become 15. Let's go ahead and run it again. So no, now we have the text view, nothing changed. When we click button one, notice that button one clicked and the size of the font has increased. If we clicked on button two, we went back to the small size, which is 15. Button one, big size, button two, small size. There are other properties we can also change, for example, the text color or the background of the text view, or we can even also set the visibility of that text um, when we click on that button. So for example, if we wanted to say change the um, color of that text, we can use the set um, text color method. And this method is actually taking an integer. Now, one of the classes available for us is the color class, which has all these colors as constants. So color dot, for example, red. So red in all caps, that's a constant that returns the integer value that represents the color red. So if we add that and we actually run our program, once we click on the um, button one, it will change the text size to 37 and it will also change the color to red. So to access one of these colors available for us, we can use the color class dot red, or if we know the um, integer value for that color, we can pass it right here directly and that will set the color for that text view. If you decided when you wanted to click on a button to make that but, um, text view disappear, one of the methods is set visibility. So set visibility, that will allow you to change if this um, text view is visible or not visible. Um, one of the classes or the constants that we'll be using for visibility is visible, which will make that text view visible. Again, this is an integer value, but you can use one of that of the constants. So if we use the visible constant or invisible constants, these are the two integers that we have for visibility that will set the text view to be visible or invisible. So let's make um, in method one or button one, make that text visible. So view dot visible, this is our constant. And we have another um, constant that we can use. So TV dot set visibility, and this constant will be invisible. So view dot invisible, this is our constant, and that will make our view um, invisible. So let's rerun the program again. So now when we click on button one, it made it red font 37 and we have it as visible. Now, if we click on button two, that will make the text invisible. So all these properties, we will not be seeing them. They changed in our text view, but we, since we set that view to be invisible, we will not be able to see them. Now, if we click on button one again, we are setting that text view to be visible again. So set visibility, and this is the constant we, we are using view.visible. So that will make our text view visible again with the properties that we have in here.